here today. Looking forward to learning more from you and to impart more from me to you so we can get you out to the polls. Here you go. So as I mentioned, my name is Jasmine Bird. I am the owner of the Diva Files. I am a graduate from Central State University, the only HBC, the only public HBCU in Ohio, class of 2009. And the partnership that we have with When We All Vote was very important because we wanted to stress the importance of voting within the HBCU community. So we are the only entity that is coming to different HBCUs to stress the importance of what it means to get out here and vote. Now there's one thing to register and vote, that's real cute, but you gotta go to the polls. Um, the, there was a major decline in voter registration as well as people heading to the polls within the African American community from 2012 to 2016. So we wanna try to make a difference when it comes to that. So we're gonna ask a couple of the panelists some questions regarding voting and how they feel about voting and utilizing their voices for a positive cause. So we're gonna start with Ms. Florida Memoria. So tell me, why is it important for your voice to be heard? Okay, so I believe that it's important for our voices to be heard, not just my voice, but all of our voices to be heard. Because when it comes to voting, I feel like it's so easy to just overlook it and think that your voice doesn't matter. And it's important to have events like this because we get the conversation started of why it is important for us to vote. Me just speaking about it to you guys today creates an influence that you guys can go and tell your sphere of influence, you can tell your friends, the people that you come into contact with every day. Start the conversation about why it's important for you to go out there and vote. Now we do have a candidate that is on our panel and I would like for her to talk about her platform here in Miami Gardens. So um, thank you and great job in explaining why it is extremely important to vote especially in the city where you live, right? So a lot of people don't vote in the uh, midterm elections. They choose always to vote in the presidential, presidential election year, which is this year, because they don't understand the importance of the midterm election and how that affects your municipalities, your own city. That affects your transportation. It affects your schools. It affects who you put in office um, that has your best interests at heart. For me, I am running for mayor of this beautiful city. My focus is on youth development, crime reduction, social reform, elderly affairs. These are things that will affect the community. Now, this city is developing really well business-wise, but for some reason, it appears that we're forgetting the poverty of the most vulnerable communities, which is our youth and our elders. And there are some people who are in office that doesn't believe that we have a poverty issue in this city. Now, when you have an area that is crime related, has an increase in crime, you have to look at your poverty, you have to look at your families. So I am taking myself um, as an immigrant, I am an immigrant story, who is from Jamaica, lived in the Bahamas, attended school in the Bahamas, and then moved here to South Florida, and has worked my way up to where I now work in government, I am taking all of my life experience, my professional experience, to go make that change myself. And that is why each of you are so important in this room, because you have the ability to either make the change yourself or vote to put someone in office to make that change for you. Now, I would like to know how many of you are registered to vote? How many of you are not? So how many of you voted in the last election? Okay. Most of you were in high school at the time? Okay, cool. So how many of you plan to go to the polls in November? I feel like you're not raising your hand. Why? Yeah. I said how many of you are going to the polls in November?
we go and we participate in this election, we would be securing or um, making an effort to make sure that our future is good. We would be making sure that we're covered, making sure that when we do graduate from college that we have a job, that it's not a problem, that nobody would be trying to stop us or making it difficult for us. We want to make sure that when we decide to become a homeowner, that it's not difficult, that we can go into a good space for where we want to live. We don't want to live in bad neighborhoods. Neighborhoods are we subjected to having to have less because of the way we look or because of uh, things that were put in place to have us to fail. We want to make sure that everything that we do or get ourselves into for the future, everything that we want, that we can have without an issue. Uh, we have a lot of, I'll say for an example, have you ever been to a vision board party and you want to go, you put, this is the type of home that I want, this is the type of car that I want, this is the type of job that I want. Well, imagine if all of these things that you go for and you can't get it because of the way that you look or because there are things set in place to stop you from going into a certain neighborhood or just because things are, they just don't want you in that space. So we want to make sure that when we do go and vote, we make sure that we're covered and our future is covered and anything that we want to get ourselves into, we don't have to worry about people discriminating against us or just looking at the way we look and saying, no, we don't want you here. We want to make sure that we have no problems and that we're good and that for when we want to grow and have our families and et cetera, they're not subjected to having um, to go to a university or any school where um, education isn't funded. We want to make sure that we can have the best for ourselves because it's really what we deserve as people. So I would say that it's very important for us to vote because we want to secure our futures in the best way possible. So there are a lot of presidential candidates, too many. To be honest with you, it's a lot of presidential candidates. So, um, this question is for you, Zion. If you could tell any presidential candidate anything about HBCUs to make that in the forefront, what would you say? I would say, one, we need funding. We need it. All these candidates, and and I look at all the candidates, all, and in all of their plans for the African American community, they all have this idea of oh we can give them give HBCUs this but little do they know most HBCUs that need the funding these days are not public universities they're private so I need them to one have that so ask you right there private universities but I also charge us as HBCU students and administrators alums whatever you are to hold these candidates to the fire whoever gets elected if they said, oh, we're gonna give 40 million to HBCUs in my first term, hold that candidate to the fire. Hold them saying that you said you're gonna do this to get me to vote for you, so you need to do it. I'm sorry. No, no, we have That's fine. That's mine. So, and this is to the to you guys. What do you feel um, the government is doing for HBCUs? What are they lacking? Other than funding. Is it just funding where they're lacking? I mean, the government doesn't do for everything. The government does for us to like to do things. And if that can change, and if they do for all what they do for work, I guess that would be better for us. Like, like I said, they only donate the public HBCUs. When, as a private HBCU, someone is struggling, regardless of whether or not uh, the people in the offices would like to say it, but our school is struggling, and we need so if the government would fund private HBCUs, that would be perfect. So you say hold them accountable. What are your suggestions for that? Well, um, so what most, so I, I'm also the campus liaison for the American Institute of Public Affairs Committee. So I've learned a lot from that lobbying organization. They, they go back and forth with AARP for being the second biggest um, lobbying community. But what they do, what little people know, they have six lobbyists. So they only have six people who are lobbying for them. Where the rest of their weight comes from is the people in that organization that care about Israel, that care about the funding for Israel. And at times, there's a lot of HBCU people that are part of it. Charlie can attest to it also, that if we showed up like that for our community, if we showed up to the USCF conferences like that, if we showed up to the Congressional Black Caucus events like that, maybe we would have a seat, a bigger seat at the table. 
So how many of you belong to organizations, the Divine Nine organizations, things like that? <laughs> okay. All right. So this question is for you, Mr. DJ. This is Space Jam DJ. How important is it for organizations, Divine Nine organizations, to utilize their platform to help people get registered to vote and to go to the polls? Um, as a member of Omega Sci Fi, um, it is one of our mandated programs. Um, I know all the organizations, we all we all work together. Um, I know campus life may be a little bit different than, than when it is when you graduate, but we all uh, do work together to uh, get folks out to vote. 